Hi there, my name is AJ of Everything AJ's and today I'm actually here to show you how I do my um, my sub catchers and how I string them when I bead them up. So I've already laid out three different patterns and I have one of these patterns that a customer actually contacted me about today and she's interested in having it. So I'm going to be stringing up this blue one right here. And so if uh, you'll hang out with me, I think what I'll do is give you a close-up version of the design and me plucking them off and beating them together. And then we'll get back together and we'll chat about it. All. Okay, here we go. So I have my crystal ball. This is a Swarovski um, 30 millimeter ball and it has the Aurora Borealis character to it. Absolutely stunning. This shines obviously beautiful in light, in the sun, like it should. And um, it's just an eye catcher. So that is why I have selected these crystals. Um, I, I don't think anybody else could blame me for it. <laughs> All right, uh, like I was saying, I do have this blue one here as a customer has picked it out. And um, so I'm gonna be beating it up and I wanted to show you exactly how I do that. And what I have here is uh, some fishing line. It's really hard to capture probably by camera. You can see a little bit of the um, shine off of it. Uh, nonetheless, it is a 17 pound fishing test. And it is that strong because, you know, you never know if um, when you have it hanging in the window uh, with the sun catching it and you never know at night, you go to put the curtain down or the blinds and you catch it. And uh, that sometimes can be quite a bit of force. So this hopefully will prevent that. I, I know 17 is an overkill, but I'd rather be an overkill on that than under. Okay. So here I have done, um, basically what I'm doing my loop, I'll loop it through two times the first time around, and then I will loop it through three times the second time, because what that's doing is I go around it that much, it creates an automatic slip here, and when I'm pulling down, this hang off piece is just stuck. It's not gonna move. Um, and from there, what I do is cut that end off, grab my lighter, and burn it down, get a little melted bead on the end, and flatten it with the metal part of my lighter, and that gives me even more control over the fact that that end is never going to slip past the knot. So that's why I suggest if you're ever going to be stringing this yourself. All right, so my lines are usually about, um, oh, how many inches was that? Six, six to eight inches long. So I cut the line longer than that because I need room for a tie off. And just in case I make a mistake when I do something up the road, I wanna have a little bit of uh, extra line to cut just in case. So let me put my tools back. All right, now I start down here and I end up here with the top. This is the bottom. My first piece is these little flute beads and they're actually the same bead on every single one of them that I make. And that's my, I have a few things that I do very consistently and then everything else is one of a kind design. So my consistent parts are the beads here that hold the charms and then the top link that's going to obviously hang with the little loop as well as the flute bead and the crystal ball. I have other shapes and such that I do use, uh, the sea snail, the heart, it's a teardrop heart. Um, I've even actually come across the infinity crystals, but they were really tiny and it was hard to see that in a window doing much good, even though it was super pretty. All right, let's get this going. So that first one holds on to the top and it hides the knot. You will not see any more of the fishing line from the rest of the way up your beading pattern. And when I tie the top, I make sure that it is tight on there. I don't want these beads slipping around the fishing line. I would like it to stay as stiff as possible. 
so that with the charm being attached to the charm bead, it's not going to allow it to flip over to the side and not necessarily stay perked up to the design how I want it. Okay, now, the reason I put so much detail into my beading designs is I, I really consider this to be like a piece of jewelry. If, if you were looking at it uh, hanging there and not only the crystal can catch your eye, but the design all the way up, I think that's worth it. I think that makes this even that much more special. Some of the beads are really tiny. Um, you know, I've got lots of different sizes that I pick to use. This is my centerpiece, so to speak, for the bottom half. And then I have a bigger centerpiece for the top half. And I even actually added a hummingbird charm to this one. Uh, the person that picked this one is uh, very much into gardening and such. So the charm that I put uh, will obviously be related to something like that. And it's already got the flower charms. So it's going to be just perfect for her character. Oh. And it's always nice when I can actually have something um, beaded up and ready to go. I, I'm making more because I have a, a shop here that needs some more crystals. And I thought, well, heck, I've already got these beaded. Maybe I just send as, as an example. And lo and behold, it worked. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is pretty important. This last small bead that I put on, let me see if I can grab it. Um, this little bead here is what's going to hold on to my charm bead. So that charm bead has an extra little loop on the end and that's going to hold on to the charm clasp. And that right there also means that when I put it on the, the fishing line here, I'd like to see that it stays straight and stuck on to something. So that has become the bead that that little bead right there stuffs about halfway up into this clasp here. And that also is assisting in keeping it straight. I do one on the top, one on the bottom. Just like that. And I will take finish, um, finish pictures and you can see that as well. I have this on an angle so that you could see what I was doing, but I'm going to lower it now so that I can get these last beads without them taking off. Okay. So this bead here is the top piece. This is going to be um, basically what you would call a centerpiece for the top half. And here's the cute little chum hummingbird. Okay. So I have to make sure I put it on facing the correct direction. And there we have it. So I've got about six or so beads left. And then I will show you what the final piece looks like. It really, and it, this is real time, so it only takes about, you know, eight to 10 minutes, depending on if you drop a bead or have a hard time getting the pattern together. All right. Let me scoot this out of the way.